Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is part three of the distributed infrastructure presentation. In this, we are going to dive into the demo and show you how everything gets put together and how we manage multiple sites using digital rebar. But before I dive into the four components we've already talked about, I want to show you the basic operation that we're going to be demonstrating over and over again. And we want to make something real and useful that you, you would see uh, so in this environment, I've already built out uh, three of my four edge sites. But and before I start really diving into the demo, I want to show you what we're going to do to prove work. In this case, we're going to be doing cloud provisioning. So if I wanted to do, say, an AWS provisioning, I could choose to use my uh, content runner. I can do a cloud provision using the Digital Rebar Cloud Wrappers content pack. I need to provide credentials. In this case, they're pre-staged with uh, my AWS, Azure, Google, um, DigitalOcean, and Linode. So I can choose whichever clouds I want to do. In this case, we're doing an Azure. I'm going to tag it with my, my tag, so it makes it easy to find, and say Add. So in this process, we literally created a machine object, backed it by a Docker container running on Digital Rebar, and that is now using Terraform behind the scenes to provision a machine in Amazon. Uh, and it's going to run through that, that process. We're seeing live updates as that process runs. And so we, we're always getting status. Once Terraform completes, we're going to pull the machine information into Digital Rebar. That metadata then gets fed into Ansible. We use Ansible to turn on the agent for Digital Rebar with SSH. And then Digital Rebar takes over control of that machine uh, for this part of the life cycle. And this is what we do uh, all the time. This is part of how we integrate the clouds. Um, we don't try to write our own APIs. Uh, it's not useful. What we're doing here is we're actually just wrapping everything together and creating a consistent, repeatable workflow that's very standardized. So here, what you'll see we're doing is we're connecting into that machine that was provisioned in Amazon. If I come over to my Amazon console and hit refresh, you'll see this new machine. This is my, what I did uh, practice. And then this is it actually bringing up that new machine for me to control. And I could repeat this process over and over again uh, for any of the cloud infrastructures. And you're going to watch us do exactly that, but on different endpoints uh, and then play a little bit. So I hope that makes sense. This is just basic operations. And we're going to create machines in different clouds as part of this demo. But the thing that makes this demo really interesting is not the cloud wrapper, we have other demos for that where we spend more time and decompose that. But the idea that we're going to show you by breaking down the distributed aspects of how Digital Rebel creates a system. And the first thing to keep in mind is that this is about site autonomy. So in this control system, we've actually built Digital Rebar clouds in different data centers spanning the United States. Uh, each one of these is already set up. If I come over, let me come over to this one. Uh, 8092. So this is a digital rebar site. I can log in. This is the first time I've been going through, so I have to accept my uh, credentials. And what you'll see is this is a digital rebar site. It's already been set up through our, dig our distributed infrastructure manager. And so uh, certain things like the catalog has already been created. So you can see we have a significant amount of, of infrastructure as code modules that have already been downloaded. That means I have workflows that I can take advantage of in here. Uh, the one I just showed you was the cloud wrapper. And then I have a couple of uh, profiles. All these things have been synced through the digital, um, the digital rebar distributed infrastructure management system. And the autonomy here is important because since this site has everything installed in it, it is a fully functional, completely autonomous digital rebar site. And so I can do exactly the, the changes I made before. Use the new UX in this case. The advantage of switching over to use the new the tip UX, this will be the 4.6 release UX, is that I can actually change the color in the banner. So you can see this is the central site. Each one of my edge sites will have its own distinctive color. Uh, and those colors are going to match the Digital Rebar Manager icon colors also. So it makes it a little bit easier to see where, where I'm jumping around to as I go. Uh, in this case, what I want to do is come in. I'm going to do exactly the same operations I did before. 
uh, I am in central, so I'm going to create a central machine in AWS. That looks great. Same operations, digital re rebar runner, the cloud provision workflow, provide the AWS credentials, tag it with vehicle again, and go ahead and say add. So in this case, I am running locally. I still have control. I'm able to have my own management. This is pretty much exactly what I just showed you in the manager which is a fully functional digital rebar system. This US central site is also a fully functional digital rebar system. And I'm going through and doing my provisioning operations exactly like what you would expect to happen. Uh, and I can show you over here, check in my, on my Amazon console. And that looks great. Here is Amazon US central, exactly like what you would expect. Uh, and so let's back over here, green bar, US central, we're watching things go. Um, one of the things that's interesting about the site autonomy is, is while this is really important for sites, it actually works really well for teams also, where we can actually have a shared library of modules and then have each team be able to participate in standard practices based on the modularity that we've exposed in Digital Rebar. But the thing that gets really interesting here is because we have site autonomy, we also then can create the other thing that's important in multi-site, which is this multi-site view, this live mirror. And in the system that we've built, because the manager is subscribed to this, uh, these three endpoints, what you'll see is we also are getting live updates from this system as it goes. So when I make changes in that endpoint, I'm actually getting live views of actions happening from the edge endpoint back to the manager, even down to the job logs. I get to watch those come in. So any changes that are made at the edge site are automatically mirrored into the manager site. So that means I could go and here's where my list of endpoints that have been registered. If I say went to the east site, notice distinctive color here. First time I'm logging in, I can come over here and if I wanted to provision over here, I could uh, do a east and this time we'll go to Google, uh, Azure. Azure is a little slower sometimes in provisioning. There's a lot, a lot of configuration that gets built. Workflow, cloud provision. That looks great. I need my Azure credentials vehicle and go ahead and hit add here. You're going to see the exact same thing autonomous site, I'm able to control and manage the infrastructure and have it start coming up. If I come back to the manager and look at the machines, you'll see here is my east site coming up. Same exact control operations. I can watch everything that's happening. And you'll notice you can, while these look identical and from an API perspective, they are identical. Uh, you can actually tell from the manager where that remote site is being controlled from. So we have that data uh, and we can do it. I'm going to do something while we spin things up a little bit. Uh, I have a placeholder for a fourth site. I'm going to go ahead and run a provisioning operation to create, to actually uh, build that fourth edge data center site. When I build this one, it's going to come up, it's going to install digital rebar, and then it's going to wait for me to do some code synchronization. I want to get that part that process started while we, we continue to go through the tour a little bit. So now that we've been going, what I've just been showing you is these live mirrors. So changes that are made at the edge sites automatically show up in the manager site. And it's important to note that you don't have, it's not just one manager, multiple digital rebars can subscribe to other digital rebars and get their data and see their management. And that means that I can create regional, global, local, shared views. I can aggregate whatever data I want. I can literally build a machine on my desktop attached to a machine running in the cloud and watch what's happening there. So there's a lot of applications for this besides strict hierarchical views and control planes. You can actually use this for team, for coordination, for permission um, views. It's, there's some really uh, careful thought in the control mechanisms and how all these things work. And then the third piece of this is once we have this mirror data, we can control it from the managers 
outwards, right? Security has to be set up. We're very careful about the direction of control and making sure that you have permissions to make changes to that. But when I make these changes, I can make the changes against the manager. The manager understands where the ultimate owner of that endpoint, that, that machine is, and it will forward the requests to that endpoint. So if you're not connected, if you're air gapped, you obviously that's not going to work until you're reconnected to the system. Uh, but in a normal management system, I can make actions across multiple machines, uh, multiple endpoints, and it will correctly do the right thing. It looks like a single infrastructure from the manager's perspective, even though the actual locations of the infrastructure are distributed. And so what I can do here is I can start having some real fun. So if I wanted, and I wanted to bring up that, that extra machine in West, I can go to provision here, create manually. Now I'm creating a West and uh, we're, we haven't used Google yet, so let's use Google. I can choose my endpoint here. So here's my West endpoint, same thing context runner, cloud provision workflow. I'm going to need to tell it to use the Google credentials. There we go. My vehicle profile. That looks great. Go ahead and start the provisioning operation. And here you can see I'm spinning up that other machine exactly what you would expect. But it's not running on my local system. If I jump to my other endpoint, my West endpoint here. Once again, distinctive color. This is my, my site West checkout machines. I've now created this machine. This was initiated from the manager and then forwarded into that other site. The same thing would be true. I can come in behind the scenes, create a uh, another uh, West AWS. Same process. AWS for this. And when I add in here, local control, I'm doing things autonomously at the edge site. And when I come back to the manager and look at the machines list, what you'll see in this case is that um, that site has, we've also created that one. So I get the benefit of having an autonomous local site and critically and the manager can also take actions against all of these systems. So incredibly powerful operations with that. Cool. And as we go through, let me check in and check my different cloud instances and show you all the machines that we've been creating, running up my cloud bills. So there's all the systems we have. If we jump over into Azure, there's my Azure machine here over in Google. Let's see if it recognizes my cloud machines. Excellent. One of the things that this allows you to do and, and our recommended design here is I can install the control plane for each cloud in that control plane. Right now I'm controlling these other cloud instances from Linode uh, cloud infrastructure and then building out because I have uh, public IPs, but I could actually run my control plane completely behind my VPC in each one of those clouds and store the credentials only for that cloud in that cloud. So there's some really powerful ways that you can take advantage of this distributed control plane where local operations are local to the cloud and management operations can be centralized or done by remote with the correct egress and ingress. So this is really powerful, but there's a, a little bit of magic going on. This is all infrastructure as code and somewhere something had to say, you know what, I need to have this automation and these properties and these profiles and these parameters synchronized across this environment. And that's exactly what this system does. So an important part of what's going on behind the scenes is, is that we've actually taken the digital rebar infrastructure as code capabilities, that catalog, and we've made it possible to synchronize components of the catalog throughout your distributed infrastructure in an incredibly controlled and managed way. And this is not done as a SaaS, it's actually done from the digital rebar managers, collecting the infrastructure's code components that are required 
having them all tracked as versions and then distributing them through this system. And it's designed in a way that allows you to enforce, and especially important for production environments, enforce exactly the infrastructure configurations that you want. So, for example, in my uh, West site, where I have a catalog already built, and I've showed you this earlier in our, our tour, I could come in and try and add in different components into the system. And the manager would actually detect that that was there and then remove them because they weren't in the prescribed list of capabilities. Let me show you what that looks like in practice. So in this case, I have my four endpoints. One of them I just built on the fly for you so I could show you this process. The other three of them are already installed and they already have content packs and version sets uh, created. And I'm going to walk through what that process means for you just on this new site. So I can choose exactly what I want to have configured on this site. Uh, in this case, I, I need the rack and license propagated. I need the context. These are Docker containers that I want to run on that endpoint. I want to have my site base, which is all of the content packs that run the site. And then I actually want to also have um, configuration information that's unique to that one site. So in this case, it's mostly the color of the banner, um, but it could be any nature of components that are unique to each individual site. Uh, and I'll show you exactly what's inside those content packs. And those ver what, these are what we call version sets. But you'll notice here that as I build that up, when I apply them, it hasn't made any changes yet, but it's identified, let me drill into this, it's identified that there's a series of operations that need to be performed. If you want to think this is like a dry run, it's a queue of work that will be performed to synchronize that site. If I was at that site, let me go ahead and go there. I haven't logged into this one yet, so I have to accept its token, that's good. Go back here. This is on the tip, so this is the one I want to see. Uh, hasn't synchronized the color yet. That's going to come in when I synchronize the content pack. Uh, and I could come in and show you. Uh, there's really nothing in the catalog at this point. So it's really an empty system. If I uh, say, you know what, I want to install another content pack, it's going to let me install it because I'm not synchronizing. But this system now added, oh, I have to remove this content pack to make it come up to speed with everything else. And if I go back and turn on this uh, synchronization, it's going to go through and I can actually see it doing these updates and synchronizing the content live for me. So here we're seeing the manager go synchronize and control this remote endpoint. The endpoint wasn't available, it would tell me that it wasn't able to connect. And uh, that would be at the end of it. In this, uh, in, in this case, it actually was now sending all the context, uh, digital rebar uh, pieces that are needed to run the complete infrastructure. And now that it's up to date, you can see that we are ready to go and there's no additional work. If I come back to this uh, southeast site, hit refresh, <laughs> you're going to notice I get my color. And then I also have the, all of the content that was supposed to be synchronized. And if I, I can start provisioning and doing all the work that I need, need to do. Uh, those version sets that I was showing you, let's look at some of them. The version sets here include uh, a list of the content packs that we want. That includes plugins, so the binary components also, configuration information that I need for that, uh, profile information, firewall ports that I want open, um, the exact configuration of the system and what its, its preferences are, really everything that's necessary to create that site identity. So we can bring up sites with minimal infrastructure and even outdated uh, digital rebar, and this process will upgrade the entire system, including digital rebar binaries itself. So we can push everything through this process um, and distribute a real infrastructure as code system. And that is so important because if you don't have a way to make the automation compatible across your sites and keep it maintained at the correct version numbers, then you really don't have any way to create a distributed control system uh, because that automation has to be kept synchronized or you have to understand exactly where it is. And because of the way we built version sets here, we actually can manage blue, green, or stage deployments. So you can build exactly the components you need in a version set 
uh, bundle it together, and then distribute it. And what we've done is these version sets don't rely on the internet. We actually cache all of everything in the catalog. So if you have custom uh, bespoke or special content, secure information, things that are sensitive or secrets, you're not putting them out on the internet. You're never sending them to us. You can build it into the catalog yourself and then uh, have it distributed through this system without you ever having to upload it to a public server um, or let it out of your control from a management perspective. So incredibly powerful ways to manage all of these pieces. So at this point, we've, we've built a multi-site infrastructure. We've added to it. We have run uh, you know, work across those clouds. Uh, one thing I want to show you before we start uh, ending the demo is I can actually tear down this infrastructure from the manager. So even though I've distributed uh, work and built VMs running across my infrastructure in different clouds, I can go in and because it's a managed infrastructure as a code system, I can do deep provision operations centrally from my manager, including on the manager. And then that work is now distributed automatically and transparently across my infrastructure. It's all API driven. So if I come in and look at this, what we're, this is the one I just built. Machines over here. What we're going to see is each one of these is now running the workflows to tear down that infrastructure and clean things up. Um, and then that means that all of my cloud instances are also getting torn down and recovered, which is exactly the way my accountant prefers to see it working. And in this case, we've, we've literally built and torn down whole cloud infrastructures, completely uh, autonomous edge sites, but yet centrally managed uh, using our infrastructure as code techniques. Whew, that's a lot of technology all fit together. Um, really, really powerful, uh, taking advantage of the immutability of infrastructure as code, our versioning, and the portability that each one of these pieces have. Uh, and that is the end of this part of the demo. Uh, everything I'm showing you is actually in. Um, this is this is not um, secret stuff. We have a the multi-site demo work. Um, shows you how to build all these things. It, it standardizes the processes. Uh, and this is following our best practice for building multi-site automation. There is that fourth demo uh, where I walk you through how all these things get built. Um, that will be uploaded soon. Um, and this is stuff that's available. So you can start, you can download, start playing. Um, I'm showing you against the 4.6 release, which is coming out in March, uh, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, but the capabilities that I'm showing you have been available in Digital Rebar uh, for multiple releases. So 4.5, 4.4 even. Um, you can get in and start playing and, and building the infrastructure. People ask me how to start this. The best way to start is just with one site. The nice thing that we've done is this isn't a manager and Digital Rebar. It's Digital Rebar is the manager. And so if you're building automation to make one site easy to manage, then you have built a distributed infrastructure ready system also. This is exciting to you. I hope it is. This is really powerful stuff. Come in, uh, ask us questions, join our Slack. We love to talk about this stuff and help you on your distributed infrastructure journey. This is Rob Hirschfeld and thanks for your attention.